Religion is a matter which lies solely between a man and his God. He owes account to none other for his faith or his worship. The legislative powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. The whole American people declared that their legislature should make no law respecting the establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Thus, building a wall of separation between church and state. Godly princes may lawfully compel stubborn and obstinate persons to worship the true God. For though faith is voluntary, such methods are useful for putting down the stubbornness of those who will not yield unless they are compelled. I, Michael Cervatus, am called a Unitarian. I question the doctrine of the Trinity. I fled persecution in France only to find myself stranded in Geneva, waiting for a ferry boat. The ferry did not run on Sunday, and knowing that everyone in Geneva was required by law to attend church on Sunday, I made an appearance in church. I was immediately recognized and imprisoned at my trial, I was convicted of denying the Trinity and rejecting infant baptism. Although heresy was no longer a death penalty offense, Calvin called for my execution. The government complied. And for these opinions of mine, I was sentenced to burn at the stake. And as the flames reached my face, I shrieked in agony. I burned for another half of an hour before I finally died. I am only one of many who have suffered such treatment at the hands of a church state where the government just does what the church tells it to do. God does not even allow whole towns and populations to be spared, but will have the walls torn down and the memory of its inhabitants destroyed, lest this contagious disease spread Whoever shall maintain that wrong is done to heretics and blasphemers in punishing them makes himself an accomplice in their crime. There is no question here of man's authority. It is God who speaks. We spare not kin nor blood of any when the matter is to contend for his glory. I can never join Calvin in addressing his God. He was indeed an atheist, which I can never be. Or rather, his religion was demonism. If ever a man worshiped a false God, he did. Not the God whom you and I 
acknowledge and adore the creator and benevolent governor of the world, but a demon of malignant spirit. It would be more pardonable to believe in no God at all than to blaspheme him by the atrocious attributes of Calvin, 